everyone. Welcome to RC Cincy Extras. Today we have the Lightning Blaster Pro. Um, I did a full unboxing and kind of initial thoughts on this. I was kind of impressed with the build quality and how it looks. It has a lot of cool features, like the fact that you can put the sling on either side, so you can put it on this side or this side, ambidextrous safety, coll uh, collapsible stock, which I kind of went all this into detail, but I did find something else that's even cooler. So these mags have these little bolts right here. And I thought they were to put them on a side of like a uh, belt. That could be true, but it's to stack multiple mags like this. So you could just unhook, go one over, unhook, go one over. So you can have three or four mags and just go ch -ch -ch -ch, and then stack from one side to the other different mags. I'm sure you go to this website and get more magazines. You could probably get more batteries, which you get batteries from Amazon. Uh, you just got to make sure the pattern is, is the same. A lot of them will have the hole on this side and the contact points on the other. They just do that so you can't use another manufacturer's magazine. They want you to use theirs, buy theirs, which I kind of get it. Satisfying click. Um, just overall great. You know, put on the smaller hole, that's for further range. Bigger hole is for uh, closer. So it makes perfect sense. I'll leave it on that for now. Uh, Picatinny rail. We kind of went over all that. What we're going to do is set up the included target right over there. I did in, uh, fill it up with the included balls. Um, one of those packets is 500 will perfectly fit in this. So this only holds 350. So there should be roughly half or so left. Uh, this may be more than a thousand. I don't know. They say a thousand, but I, think, I don't think they're precise, right? It may be a little bit more generous because there's so many dehydrated balls there. And then uh, we're running the factory battery. I just want to show you really quickly all the different batteries you can literally run on this. Now, I'm not saying that the 11.1 batteries are safe, but you can. So this one is the one I ran on my Anstoy. Uh, it is Dean's 2 JST. JST will plug into that uh, JST2, whatever, STMP2 connection. It will connect into it. You can technically run 7.4 volts uh 70c polymer these are really really punchy batteries you're gonna need a velcro strap which i do have i could velcro strap it literally right here or a 3d print a case for it would be more professional of course you can run the 11.1 uh, volt battery 2000 milliamps you can also run the uh, the uh hyper gel x shot one that i just reviewed this is its battery you can run this battery same connector course this same as the connector as this you can also run a 7.4 volt 2000 milliamp regular one basically the one that's in is 1300 this one is 2000 cylinder uh, this one and these all these will fit the only one that and this will fit as well this is an 11.1 volt 800 milliamp uh, JST connection which this will run as well so we may try punchier batteries but that's just crazy all this now the lighting will work I just don't know if you'll see the balls light up uh, we'll, what we'll do is we'll try to end this kind of quickly and then maybe we'll step back out tonight I'll leave the target up there we'll step back up there tonight and see if it lights up like tracers you know what I mean uh, I do have tracers for my real gun so they are really cool non incendiary of course that's the only ones you can shoot at Target World at um, Range USA or any other target place so we're gonna go ahead and shoot with the factory battery, we're gonna start in single fire mode. So we're gonna go one notch down a single fire and we're gonna to try to hit that target. There we go, we're primed now finally. That is fairly accurate. Uh, they're turning a little bit. They're splattering. I love the way that this paper shows where you hit when it gets wet and then it, when it dries, it turns back to this color. So this is completely reusable. It says at least from 20 feet away, place target on a hard surface, at least 20 feet away, caution, uh, place blaster when the target, when hit, the water beads will show the point of impact and, and ready to use again in minutes. So once it dries, it's ready to use. It also has a scale, so you could do like a point system for obviously five is the center, four, three, two, one on the outer perimeter. I put a screw through it because I didn't want to tape it. So that's how it shoots at uh, single shot. So it's fairly accurate. And then 
ready for fully automatic, honey? Yeah. Show this side of the gun, like when it's firing, like how they gotta look. So they can see like the speed it's coming out. Beautiful feeding, smooth, sounds good. Reminds me of the sound of the Pulsar Pro. Uh, very similar rate fire, 200 FPS, good battery, good feeding magazine. All these are like on par. They're between, I'd say 70 something and like 90, they're all really good. The I know they make a um, gel blaster, like the 400 series, then they make the 1200, which has the big drum barrel. Those are supposed to be incredible. Uh, 12 per second, just like this one. Uh, typically parts of process eight, but they're all shoot right around the same. The only thing that's really gonna increase it is a better battery. The spring and the motor can only come, come and the air, um, uh, uh, pocket right here at a cylinder currently could produce so much power so it's going to typically shoot right around the 200 mark this says 200 plus so it's probably getting 210 220 uh we could get a chronograph but i don't think we do gel blasters enough to justify it i think they're like 54 55 overnight shipping i thought about it if people really show interest in this then i have no problem doing it but if most got, most of the folks coming by are here for cars then i really just can't justify uh, dumping the money into this. So I think that's really cool. It's kind of bright out. You're not going to see the light, but uh, you guys want to see some action. So we are going to throw in. I don't like this battery hatch. It's very, very tight for some reason because there's a little circuit board right here that helps with the charging or manages it. And it fits really tight. I'm not going to lie. So we're going to undo the factory battery. You can tell the color of the battery. That's how you know it belongs to it. That's really cool. That's a nice touch because when it's in there, it doesn't stand out all crazy. It looks really good. So what we're going to do is go first from 7.4 volt ion to 7.4 volt polymer 70C. So the most important part is, oh man, I can't tell which one's positive and which one's negative. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to look at it this way. So if you're plugging it in, the positive is to this side. Positive is to this side. Otherwise you will burn up your uh, blaster, just to let you know. There we go. Now we're not gonna, obviously, you could do a battery strap, is probably what I would do. I would neatly tuck the wire and do a battery strap, but for now I'm just gonna hold it like so, just cause obviously I would run the wire neatly through here and do some kind of case or put the battery in here. This is just a big boy uh, but this is 7.4 volts just like that one, but just polymer. Let me show you how big of a difference polymer makes. We're gonna start a single fire. And then fully automatic. Oops. I feel like it's punchier, it's snappier. It just gives it a lot more juice in my opinion. It doesn't necessarily increase the rate of fire too much. It just makes it a little bit snappier, a little bit more punch, more consistency. And then having a battery like this, you could literally go 350 rounds. You can go dozens of mags before you would have to replace this battery. So in a war, something like this being nicely strapped to the back and running the wire neatly would be a game changer. It would basically allow you to go mag after mag after mag without having to change the battery. Then we're gonna step it up a notch. We're gonna go to 11.1 .1 volts. This is the one that I shot in the Hypergel HP, um, HPG 700, the rifle that, that it went crazy in. We're gonna see what it does. Now, we're not gonna shoot a bunch like this. Obviously, you can always shoot a little bit. None of these guns are gonna be recommended until I do full testing. This battery will uh, fit, as you can see that. So we can actually, Close the door and everything. It's kind of a pain, but I'll show you that it does fit. So you obviously want to turn it in a manner where everything's just going to lay nicely right here, right? Then you're going to take the door. This may even fit better than a factory battery. It's kind of funny. Yeah, it does. That's kind of hilarious. So there we go. We have the battery in there. Once again, this is 11.1 .1 volts ion, not polymer. So here we go. Single fire. Nothing spectacular. 
Here we go. And now show it the target. <laughs> so it's doing a very, very similar performance to the 200 plus FPS uh, HPG 700. This is a nice gun. I like this one a lot. And especially if the tracers are in the light at dark, I just like the way this feels. This reminds kind of like a scar or like a G something. I don't know. I just love this design of this gun. It all feels good. It looks really nice in there. See a little bit of moisture, but you can see all the wiring and the cylinders and everything in this thing. It just looks really, really good. So that's crazy. But I think we can go even harder. Now, I'm not going to do a high grade polymer battery. I don't want to necessarily burn or damage anything. Like I said, this may handle it for a little while. With time, you can burn and strip your gears. We just don't know. We haven't done the testing. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at the connector, the way it's supposed to go, just like this. And we're going to see that positive is on this side. That is very important. If you do this wrong, you'll burn up your gun. I could tell you that right now. I'm not even going to try to sugarcoat it. You'll burn up your gun. So this is a... Um, this is a polymer 11.1 volt, but it's only 30 C. I do have higher grade uh, 3S packs. I don't really recommend those. Those are really punchy, snappy kind of drone batteries. The only cool part about this battery is it should theoretically fit really nicely if you center the battery. So this is now a polymer battery. So we're gonna go first to single. I haven't charged the battery in a long time either. That sounds good, ready? <laughs> Put safety on, man. I mean, 350 is not a bad number. You think the other one is a 700, and like the Pro was a the Pulsar Pro was a 500. This one's a 350. You have the 400 series S S B R or S A R or S B R whatever uh, 400 series where it has like a magazine like this. Then you have the one with a 1200 where it has the drum. Uh, they're all really nice guns, but the capacities do matter. And I tell you what, that's the biggest, whoops, I don't know why I did that. The biggest, I feel like the biggest, I could have caused a jam right there. Uh, you don't want to ever do that. You probably want to empty it out before you do that. But I feel like the biggest thing on the Gen 8s is the capacity. I feel like that one's not enough. 350 is a good number. Like you just see how much I just shot that up and I still have enough to, you know, fight someone. Obviously it's in safety. So what I can tell you about this gun is it shoots really, really good. Make sure there's nothing in it. Take it off safety. We'll go to single shot. You always want to make sure your gun is empty. That way it'll allow itself to dry internally. You can see. It's okay, baby. You can see a little bit of moisture right through here. A little bit of moisture here and there just because it's a water gun. So sorry, I think someone's at our door trying to offer to cut the grass or something like that. So, sorry about that. We had some neighborhood kids stop by, offer to cut the grass. I thought they were, but they needed some gas for their mower. So I respect the hustle. If you're out there trying to make a dollar, that's a good thing, right? Uh, it teaches hard work. So anyways, I get sidetracked. But yeah, what can I say about this? It shoots absolutely phenomenal. It performs great. It's on par with the Pulsar Pro, with the HPG. 700 they're all within a few fps of each other they all sound good they seem to all hold 11.1 volts for now i don't know the longevity test still has to be done i need to shoot like 10,000 rounds to that gun and i could do the same thing for this one um and i think a lot of them will hold up as long as you're not just mag dumping and you're just using it to battle and quickly hit someone and get out of there if you're just holding it just dumping a magazine and filling it up just holding it dumping a magazine on a hot day you're probably going to burn something up or you're just going to simply wear out the little uh gears in there they're not nylon they're cheap pl cheaper plastic some are nylon i don't know if this one has a metal barrel to be honest with you 
the one the one uh the hpg uh or whatever hpg 700 had a metal barrel i don't know if this one has a metal barrel it looks like a black uh barrel like a nylon barrel maybe so it's still good but it's not as nice as a metal one i know the pulsar pro has like a blue metal uh metal barrel through it and like it's actually pretty decent this one i'm not saying it's bad uh supposedly it shoots faster than it which it kind of seems like it when you put 11.1 volts uh it shoots good and look at that target really quickly we just paused for like five four minutes maybe three minutes just to literally give them some gas and it's already dry and it's reusable that is incredible this completely dried out it didn't hurt anything and then it's ready to be shot at again you know it it turns like red when you hit it it turns like red and it's perfect and it's reusable so you're not you're not what you know you're not wasting a bunch of targets and paper that's really cool to include i'm not seeing any other company include that um you know i like the collapsible foldable stock there's just a lot to like about this one and if the lighting tonight what we'll do really quickly is tonight we'll just shoot a few rounds and if it makes it like tracer rounds then this is going to be my favorite gun. Uh, this, I like the way this looks the most out of all of them. The Pulsar Pro, the kind of hippie, like, splash different color paint. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I like this green color, especially with the lighting. I like the orange. I like the collapsible stock. I like the target it comes with. I like the fire rates. The battery's a 1300, not the highest capacity. I think the Pulsar Pro was 1800. The uh, 700 uh, X-Shot was 2000. But that's easily remedied with any battery you want pretty much so there really that isn't a factor as far as i'm concerned it's the main platform itself it seems to be made nice i can take this one apart and look at it has a decent sized motor not the biggest i've seen but decent size the one had like a monster motor in it so i kind of like what x shot is doing for 49.99 this is 78 dollars so is it the budget king absolutely not the Budget King, I hate to say it, guys, is the HPG 700. It holds a 700 round capacity, 2000 milliamp battery, uh, and it's this shape, which you get tons of batteries like this. Um, it came with 20,000 balls. This came with uh, 5,000. So you're getting 15,000 more balls. It, it, it's, it's hard to beat. It's just hard to beat. So I could officially say after having, you know, four or five, five gel blasters, that that is the budget king. For $49.99, you're not going to get anything better. A couple guys said it was $42 at Target. I went to Target. It's actually $50 bucks at Target. So technically at Walmart, it's like a penny cheaper. <laughs> so I don't know what they're talking about. Maybe they had a digital coupon or something I didn't know about. They did have their Surge XL on sale for 84, but Walmart has it all the time for like 70 or 80 something or 70 something. So I don't know about that one. I'm not liking that one. I'm not a fan of the Gel Fire Pro series of uh, of gel blasters from Nerf. I'm not a fan of those. Mr. Beast released one and everyone's not thrilled with it. It's barely getting over 100 FPS. It looks kind of cool. I'll give them that. The battery, the capacity is like 500 milliamps or something. It's just really not that spectacular. When it comes down to it, within that $80, I would say I would never spend more than $80, $85 for a, uh, a blaster. You can get now the Volts, which is the Gen 8, basically, whatever that brand is from Amazon, you can get it for $79.99. So you can get basically a Gen 8 for $79.99. They even have the Gen 9s now. Uh, and the Gen 9s, I think, are like, around that price range too maybe 10 bucks more so you have you know more realistic looking ones i'm not a big fan of kids running around with realistic looking m4s and assault rifles especially going on with these idiots with gun controls and how cops are and everything i'm not even gonna get into that but it, it, it i don't believe a kid should run around with a gun that looks like a gun you know what i mean like that could get them in a lot of trouble this is not going to be mistaken for a gun if you make this mistake this for a gun you're a complete idiot but hey, you know, there's some dumb people out there too. So, but that's pretty much it, just of it. So I would stay within that 40, within that 50 to $80 range. You want to, you want, you're an adult, you, you know, you play at arenas or whatever, and you want modifications. Okay, get a Gen 8. You're anyone else, 
and between that 50 to 80 dollar range the best budget king is the hp g700 and then this one in the pulsar pro will trade blows i personally like this one better and then hp g700 kind of beats this just because of the budget king not to say this is a better gun i think the led feature at night with the tracers is going to be incredible and then the reusable target so this has its points but of course it's you know uh 28 dollars more so you have to take that into account we'll see which one holds up longer we'll see which one holds up with the 3s we'll put tons of rounds through them we'll maybe do some other cool shooting videos like me versus my wife fun stuff like that we'll see what else we come up with but i just had a ball i just love this collapsible stock i just absolutely love this gun i think this is my favorite uh you know between 50 and 80 dollar gel blaster period and i like it you know could be a little shorty too right there and a selector sounds so good like when you're flipping through and the other one i forgot to mention about the hpg 700 is it has that capability of turning down so if you're giving it to a kid and you're really worried about him like shooting someone in an arm or leg in it like hurting you could turn that one down you can't turn this one down you would have to neuter it by putting like a lower voltage battery which i wouldn't personally do because it has to cycle properly for it to shoot so necessarily i wouldn't do that so there is that so uh and plus the not to mention they have the clutch and then the trace fire two other ones but one has like a 600 round internal and then like a 700 on top or something or 800 on top it's the highest count uh gel blaster i've ever seen to hold on a gun and it still shoots like 170 uh fps which is still impressive it's like better than most cheap amazon gel blasters and it's like what 30 something bucks or 40 bucks so that's something to even think about let me know if you guys want to see the trace fire because i think that's a really interesting gun gel the only one that from uh gel fi uh, fire or gel whatever nerfs versions of gel blasters is the shotgun that shoots five shells that shoots five um gels at once that's kind of cool so a shotgun and kind of like a spread so if like multiple targets and you just go in there and pump them that would be kind of cool i could kind of see that and then of course the sniper rifle they have is a 200 fps cock action sniper rifle so that'd be kind of cool to like hide in the bushes somewhere wear like some camo or something i kind of guess that'd be cool kind of more like a airsoft kind of like battle arena format i kind of get that um so yeah so there you have it guys that's my review of this uh stay tuned there will be a quick night video at the end of this i'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this video up there will be a quick like night video shoot that we'll throw on the back of this video if you want to check that out and that's it guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one. peace